made me realize that there was something that was unhealed and things that I need to really look at in my life was um, I was diagnosed with chronic um, um, CLL, uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia um, in 2023. My life screeched to a halt at that point. It just, it just stopped. And I had to really look at things a little bit differently. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Communion Podcast, where we have free flow conversations with friends about their lives, their past, present, and what's in store for our future. We discuss overcoming obstacles, spiritual experiences, next chapters, life's profound moments in a warm communion with a friend. Together, we dive deep into the journey of personal growth and collective healing by healing ourselves and sharing those journeys. I'm your host, Lee Papa. Join us. Maria Hosmer was born in Brooklyn, New York, and moved to Las Vegas in the year 2000. She is an animal wellness coach and has been a professional dog trainer since 2003, teaching obedience and behavior modification. She is a strong advocate for returning our animal companions to a more natural state of being, giving nutrition consultations for dogs and cats, as well as creating customized botch flower combination blends for emotional balancing. Maria has been trained as a Reiki master, connective healing practitioner, and is certified in animal acupressure. Maria is available for virtual coaching consultations and in person in the Las Vegas, Nevada area for pet training. Topics include the importance of feeding species appropriate diets for dogs and cats, how to evaluate and create botch flower combinations that best suit your pet's unique emotional needs, and to discuss any different holistic therapies that are available to support your pet to live happy and healthy lives. Maria's personal healing journey through a leukemia diagnosis in 2023 is the main topic of this part one of two interview, that you will end up bonding with this beautiful soul and her extraordinary courage to look within and take the steps needed to thrive, her bravery to start living and choosing love over fear. Join us with Maria Hosmer. Welcome, Maria. Hello. Thank you for having me. Of course, I can't wait to get started on this. So, Usually I start with asking my guests about their background, but knowing you the way that I do, I think that your background is going to come out organically in the questions that we're going to discuss. All right. Lay so out. you have had significant obstacles in your life. And like many of us, we have had traumas in our childhood. We have had uh, traumas and obstacles to overcome over the years. When was the first time that you can remember where you saw these traumas and these obstacles in a different light and thought, I have power over these. I can do something about them. So maybe a spiritual awakening or or some trigger that really gave you a different approach, a different look at your past. Oh, wow. I'd have to say through my relationships, I started to see some things. Um, I could see that there was a lot of things that triggered me. And a lot of times I wouldn't necessarily look at them, really. I would just kind of, it was just like an impulse, a knee-jerk reaction to things. Never really thought. I just thought it was just my personality that, you know, I'll get over it kind of thing. Uh, and my relationship with my husband is one of the most, one of the most important, which has led me to the more the bigger one. But he... um He's like, he's a kind soul, uh, patient soulful. I could see through his eyes a lot of the time to what he was seeing in me, which was a lot of anger. There's a lot of resentment, a lot of sadness too. We had our ups and downs. We've been together now for, oh gosh, 30, 33 years. That's um, awesome. So he's seen me at my worst and he's seen me at, 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 at my best. Um, so through our journey together, you know, things would come up and I'd re I'd react and he was so patient with me and he would, we would try to talk through it. And there were some rocky moments. And I think what ultimately made me realize that there was something that was unhealed and things that I need to really look at in my life was um, I was diagnosed with chronic um, um, CLL, uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia um, in 2023. My life screeched to a halt at that point. It just, it just stopped. 
And I had to really look at things a little bit differently. When you have that experience of something that, that your mortality is sort of you're staring it in the face and you think, what am I, what am I going to do with this? I was obviously very frightened at first. I was angry also because I felt like I was di- misdiagnosed a couple of times. Things I could probably could have caught it sooner. But I think it was the fear, just dying. Fear of, of at this point in my life, looking back, like, like what have I done? What, ha- what have I done to get here? Because I, I truly believe that our emotions, um, our traumas, our experiences, it all gets stored in our bodies. And whether it's good or bad, um, it just stays. And I think that understanding that there was something that it wasn't healed in me may have caused this. And I know it's weird because the first thing you think of is like, oh, you know, you know, genetic thing or something I ate or exposed to something. And that could could very well be. But I also believe that our emotions can carry a lot of a lot of this ease in our body. So got that diagnosis. I immediately I was in that fear moment, but I didn't want to stay there. I wanted to needed to find some kind of control. Here was something with be way beyond my control. And I needed to, I needed to have some sense of control. I've done that person. I'm like, okay, I got to fix this. Mm-hmm. How do we fix this? So I, I don't know if you call it, you know, divine intervention or whatnot. I was um, going through, you know, YouTube like everybody else does. And I'm just trying to get my mind off of this situation, trying to wrap my brain around what's going on. And I came upon Louise Hayes, um, a couple of her videos that were out about positive affirmations. Now, you were familiar with Louise Hay. I was. I mean, I've I've been on a spiritual journey for, I mean, as long as I can remember. I mean, when I was even a child, I, I was raised Roman Catholic. So it was kind of like God was this big, scary guy. And it just never felt that wet way to me. I said, there's something that's just not quite right about that. But I know he loved me. And I'm thinking, well, if you love something and someone so much, doesn't it just didn't resonate with me that he was mean and scary and he was gonna judge me and all these bad things. So there was always an underlying search for the truth about that my entire life. Even as a child, I can remember feeling this is just isn't right. Something's not right. So I was going through my spiritual journey like most people do, you just pick up books and you hear some things or you start delving into some things and then Louise Hayes was definitely one that I, I picked up quite a few of her books in the beginning. But when you're first starting out, you just kind of read it. You kind of read it and you kind of use a little bit of it. And then you find something else and you go on. And it never really sunk in. But when I saw the one video that she had was talking about how our thoughts can create, manifest and create some mm-hmm. disease and, and things in our body. And that, that really intrigued me. And I started listening and I'll never forget the exercise that she, that was, it seemed so simple. And I, it, and any, I would encourage everyone to do this. I mean, it's a simple exercise. It's not easy. You look in the mirror and you look in your eyes and you say to yourself, I love you. And look, I thought, no problem. Go to the bathroom, <laughs> you know, got this cabinet mirror and I'm going to look and here I go. Here comes the words. It took me 20 minutes wow. to get the words out. I tried to say them and my whole body was, I, they, those words were stuck in my throat. And I shook my head. Oh, this is ridiculous. I can do this. Okay, let's try this again. Nothing for like 20 minutes. And I remember starting to cry. Thinking, I was going to ask you, were yeah. your emotions involved there? Yeah, I, I, I started to cry. I, I felt, what? why is this so hard? This shouldn't, this shouldn't be hard to do. Like I can say, I love you, Lee. I love you to my husband. Yeah, I love you to my pets. I can say, I love you to everybody around. But when it comes to saying it to myself, mm-hmm. it was probably one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. And I, I know that sounds silly, mm-hmm. but I'm serious. If you, if everyone just did that, you would find a little resistance. Even if, if you can actually maybe get out those words a lot quicker than 20 minutes, there is mm-hmm. you'll feel a little resistance. Like, Almost Self-love like love. Yeah. Is uh 
is a is a big issue. Yeah. There's so much that stems from a lack of self-love and self-care and they do they go hand in hand. But the Louise Hay book where that we're referencing is You Can Heal Your Life. Phenomenal book. Everybody should have it. I'll put a link to it in the description. Yeah. There are certain books that just you'll use over and over again. It's a reference book besides yeah. just reading it. The manual for life. So, honestly. Exactly. The the diagnosis that you received and note, we're not saying have this or no. it's mine. That's right. one of the things is you don't own the diagnosis. Yeah. You don't link to it. You don't speak life into it, right? We speak That's life a, into it. It's just something right. I was diagnosed with. Exactly. So when you saw, when you went to the reference guide, and this okay. book was written like 30 years ago or something. So we've manifested a lot of diseases since then. And so you can get to the closest disease, dis-ease, mm-hmm. dis-ease in the body. Um, and I'm, I'm sure diagnosis was in the book. And so what did it reference if, if that's not too personal for you? No, it's, it's fine. Um, I think one of the, um, off the top of my head, I can't remember it specifically. I could look it up, but one of them that hit me was, it was self-esteem, lack of self-esteem. And that obviously that was a big issue for me. First of all, I can't even say I love you to my, <laughs> you know, that's the first thing I'm like, why is this so hard? And that's why I'm so hard. I just felt I was not lovable. I could not. And that head. was an aha, though, for you, oh, right? Huge aha. Uh-huh. That that took me down. That took me down a path of really trying to figure out why is it? What is it in me that that can't say those words or believe it or even think that's possible? I think also other than than that, it was the idea of another thing, exercise that she suggested and was it blew my mind was to monitor your thoughts in one day, just. Any thought you have, look at that. Is it a, is it a positive thought or is that a negative thought? Lee, I will tell you, and this is no exaggeration, 90% of my thoughts in a day were negative. Mm-hmm. Whether it was about myself, whether it was about the world in general, whatever. 90% of the time. And that was a huge wake up. Conference. This is, a, your thoughts create, manifest things. And these are the things I'm thinking all day long. Of course, I'm not up. Yeah. And, and you know, we have about 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day. Science uh, says some people, overachievers, have up to 90,000 thoughts a day. So you're an overachiever. So you probably did. And how the percentage, just like you said, about 90%, how many do you think are on autopilot based on the program that you had laid down, the neuro patterns, whatever you want to call it? that you'd lay down over the, your entire life. And that's why we can't just turn a switch that it's the deep dive of healing that will transform you away from dis-ease in the body. Right. Yeah. And then, so then when you realize that, when you, then you, you're like, wow, that's, 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 it's insane. And it's to, exactly, it, it is insane to do that doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. You know, it's insanity. <laughs> so what do you do to counter that? Or how do you, how do you change that? And again, not it's simple, but not easy is she would say, use a trigger, find a word, word or a phrase that you can use when you find yourself going there. And you would, you'd be surprised how exhausting you could, it could be after a day of doing it. It's like you say the word after every, negative thought you have and that's all you do all day it's like oh, that word whatever that trigger for me it was my horse's name Alice every time I would think of a negative thought immediately I'd say Alice and I'd snap myself out of it mm-hmm. and I would think of him and the joy that it, that brought into my body and that's where I would focus that energy that on that joy and that love that I had for my had for my horse and and that took me right out of that thought. And then I would start replacing those thoughts. And it's a process. It took me, I think, from when I was diagnosed back in, it was in April, I believe, 2022. I have to say it wasn't until around July, August, where I or well, yeah. was negative thoughts. And then, and I was mindful of what I was thinking those days. And it's when you're, re- yeah, you're retraining yourself. 
And you're talking about the the word that you used was Atlas. We, in the mindfulness programs, we use cancel clear. Mm. And that you can find that if you are cancel clearing or whatever word that you use, you could be saying it all day. And that's when you're saying it's exhausting. But then the awareness is there. Once the awareness is there, you can do something about it. Right. And it's small incremental changes every day. So changing each one, you know, stopping the thought before it, com- it, it comes, it manifests. And then you get to shift it. Right. And so now we're in 2024 uh-huh. and you're doing amazing. Yes, I am. I am. And, um, and I know that there was resistance around because we're, we've known each other a long time and we should probably touch on that. There was resistance around the pathway yeah. to healing. Yes. So there are multiple pathways. And when you are in the holistic realm, we always want to choose the holistic route. But there is so much to be said about modern medicine. And love for you to speak to that journey as well. Yeah. That, thank you for, for bringing that up because I think this is really important. I mean, I'm not obviously not going to suggest someone do something. You have to you have to go within and you figure out what works for you. But what worked for me, yes, I'm very resistant to conventional type medication. I don't even take literally aspirin is probably the only thing I do take or did take. And that even that sometimes I must be like, will you please just take aspirin because I just felt I could do it naturally, whether I again, sort of tapped in to find out where that was coming from, try to clear it, or even to get to the point where, it, okay, it was pounding and I couldn't deal with it anymore. I would reluctantly take it. So being offered this life-saving medication, and don't get me wrong, it, it, you know, it's a miracle from God, I believe, it's in my personal thought, that this was given to the world to help people in my situation. I did try the holistic route, but it just, um, it wasn't working as well. And I had to make a decision came to the point where this decision had to be made whether I go the allopathic route or not. And I did have, and I will say I did a lot of praying and a lot of looking inward and, and instead of resisting it, instead of looking at it as a toxic evil thing, which I'm sorry to say that's the thought, that negative thought that was in my head. Again, yeah. I'm going to change this thought. How do I do that? So now I think of it as this, well, it was a gift that was given to help people in my situation so thank, thank you for that miracle. And every time I take that pill, I always give it thanks as I'm taking it. I say, thank you. I call it my magic pill. Thank you, magic pill, yeah. for what you're doing in my body to keep me alive and being able to, to enjoy my life with my husband and my pets and people that I love and to continue on. And in and, and my belief, it worked very quick because there was no resistance to it. I think that there was that that willingness to heal and to be open. And I think it worked better because there wasn't any resistance to it. That just really was surprised how well I was, it did. Well, I was yeah, out. your doctor. Was, yeah, he was he was blown away. I mean, I had my lift nodes were so swollen that I would literally look at both. These fall on my neck were very swollen mm-hmm. under my armpits, my groin area. It was they were they were really really swollen. And I would say within, within two weeks. The, my lymph nodes in my neck were just gone. They were just gone, which was mind blowing, to be honest with you. So, and it wasn't, and it's not just about the medicine either. Again, I'm going back to the whole thinking positive thing. And faith, my faith is very important to me. I asked for guidance. I asked to be, you know, to lead me to the right decisions because I don't like to make decisions on my own because, you know, <laughs> don't always get it right. I like to try to be, get as much help as I can sometimes. Um, it's when I just started thinking differently about things. There was no resistance. I'm like, fear was huge for me. I was always afraid of everything. I tried new things, um, fear of failure, fear, fear of success, even fear was, is a, was a big, big, powerful uh, block in my life. And I decided to try to let go of that fear. And that's not, it's not an easy process. Again, we're so programmed to be fearful of everything, um, at least for me. I had to start letting go of some some fear and surrendering to something greater than myself that knew better and that had my highest good in, in mind. So once I started releasing that fear, you know, 
taking chances that I never took before, doing things out of my comfort zone, living my life. I just, I didn't realize how resistant I was to life. I would be afraid of everything. I wouldn't, I was always fear of, fear of looking silly or, or I wouldn't get it right. That was a big one. I wouldn't get it right. I mean, who gets it right, right? All the time, put that pressure right. on myself all the time. I won't get it right. So why even try? So once I started changing my mind about that, just you'd be surprised how quickly life looks better. Mm-hmm. It feels better. And you attract more possibilities that are for your highest good. So yeah, it was, it's been a, it's been a process and it seems like it's been going on forever. It's only been almost uh, two years, almost. Not long. Not long and can be done. It's just the willingness to surrender what we feel like we can control things. And we just can't. The surrender. And to to look at yourself. And that's what you did is that you, you not only you did the deep dive work and you continue to do the deep dive work to keep there's, there's peeling no, away the onion, right? The proverbial yeah. onion. There's always um, something, right? There's always something. You know, I, I joke about it. If you think that you've arrived, you know, you, then you'll be on the other side, right? It's that's the purpose of, of our experience. And uh, you you are one of my heroes. Yeah. And one of the things that I know that you have shared with me is that you always felt that there was, um, that if something good was happening, there was going to be another shoe would drop, which is a term that, yeah, that you would use. And that was a deep program from your childhood. Yeah. And you have overcome that. And you've done such miraculous work within the last couple of years. And we've been on this healing journey together for a long time because when did, when did we first meet at Ganesha Center? Oh my gosh, Ganesha. Yeah, Ganesha. So um, the wellness center that, that um, we had in, um, in Las Vegas that was open in 2009 through 2014, 15-ish, um, and so you were on your holistic healing journey then right. because you came and took classes and all kinds of things. Yeah. So wh- why do you think that even though you were on your progressive healing journey, that this still manifested? Sure. That's, a, that's a great question. And I, and I have to say I, that was something that I sat with for good. I will say that first month after the diagnosis was a, I got, I went really within. I was journaling um, and I let everything out. I was mad at God and I told him so. You know, it's like, I'm mad at you and this is why. And so I just kind of poured everything out in my journaling. And when I did that, it just sort of made me think I have two choices. I could continue this road of not loving myself, of fear, anger, all of these quote unquote negative emotions. I could keep going that route. Or the other choice was to really look at what was going on in my life to get the, in and, and, and the ways that I needed it. I, I guess I, I do therapy. I, I do, uh, I see a therapist. So I am working with some of my traumas and things. So it was either to, it was either love or fear. Hmm. I needed to decide. And so I decided to go the love route, which is always a good route, the best route, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah. it was. Because I'm, I'm loving myself, love my life. I love the fact that spirit was telling me now's the time to look at your life and see what we can do about making your life experience more joyful as opposed to how I was living it before. Um, and it was it was difficult because when you're in that comfort zone, that's what you know. It feels comfortable. I know it sounds strange that oh, no, I just emotions and all this feels comfortable. And, and, and it's interesting you say that when I started to, to start to heal and I would find those, those moments of joy, there would be that little, that little voice in the background saying, don't be too happy, <laughs> be too happy. You know what happens when you get too happy and around the corner there. And that took a long time quiet that. But I do now when I actually hear it, I will say, step up, it's like, step up. just go away. I'll deal with you later. I'm enjoying the moment right now. It's not about ignoring it. 
because the more you resist something, the more it persists, right? The more you resist, right. it persists. It's mm-hmm. more of acknowledging that I'm aware that that program is still there. Mm-hmm. But I don't let it, I don't let that program keep running all the time now. So I hear it. I'm like, okay, well, I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm having a good time right now. I'm going to continue to have this good time regardless of this little sound. So go away. I'll deal with you. Um, and once you start doing it, it's a little tough. It's, it's like, you know, learning to walk again. <laughs> you know, it look yeah. it off. it's new, but now I'm picking up a little speed and it's a lot easier. And I, I'm more, it's more quickly comes to me that well, this is a negative thought or I'm, or I'm not enjoying this moment because of that little voice. And let's quiet that for a minute. And I have to say that even with regardless of all seemingly things that are going on in the world right now, um, I'm aware of them, but I don't let that. I don't let that interfere with my own, my own growth and my own progress. And, and happiness. My happiness. Cause it, that yeah. doesn't dictate my happiness. None of that does. I dictate what I do to keep myself happy and healthy and try to keep myself positive regardless of what's going on. And it's difficult, but it can be done. And I'm going to tell you 58 years old, and it's been a long time to get to this point, but I'm here and I'm, and I would not, I wouldn't change a thing. Hmm. If this is where, this is where I am now, this is getting me here. And it had to take all that stuff to get here. I would do you think that you received, and I've heard people say that many, many times, and, and I've said it myself with the major obstacles, as painful as things can be, on the other side of it, it's much easier to say, oh, um, you know, it's hard to go through it for sure. But when you do move through it, and you eventually do, the reward is definitely great. But do you think that you were getting messages along the way about the self-love piece and it just kept getting louder and louder and louder until this was like it shoved you up against the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's and it's funny because looking back at my spiritual journey and, and all of the so-and-so coincidences or signs and things, there was definitely little nudges here and there that were trying to gently get me to understand that there was something that needed, things that needed to be addressed before mm-hmm. they got too out of hand. And I have to say that even though it's not a diagnosis, like this is not something that anyone would, would want to hear. For me personally, it was probably, it saved my life. I know it mm-hmm. sounds strange to say that, no. but it did save me. Because if I had just kept going in before I started doing my healing work, I honestly don't know if I'd be having this conversation with you. I am so grateful. Your inner work has just been extraordinary. And I know that you are going to reach a lot of people with your story. So thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing. Um, one of the things that, that I know that you struggled with previously, and I think a lot of people do, is when you are sensitive, empathically sensitive, I want to clarify that, sure. and you feel things viscerally in your body, that there's a tendency to retreat. There's a tendency to not go out in crowds, not go to parties that you've been invited to, not go, you know, just not live your life and isolate. And I've seen you move through that to the to the point where you're going to concerts and you're, you know, you're doing all kinds of amazing things. And uh, the transformation is extraordinary. How, how did you how did you move through that? Honestly, it was it was my faith. It was was those those moments when something would present itself, and I would look at it and say, "Okay, I could retreat, like you say, because I very easily can do that." Or what about this experience? Would it be helpful for me? Is it like, will I find joy in this experience? Will I meet someone new or have you know have a conversation? I love having these kinds of conversations. Will I have a conversation with somebody? Just ran- and I usually have this ran these conversations with random people that I meet, which I absolutely love. It's just it's stepping, it's taking those little baby steps out of your comfort zone a little bit, and I still tentatively do that. But I ask for guidance a lot of times, and we're more so now than I have, even though I thought I I thought I, but I, as I can tell now, I wasn't even close to really listening or tapping in the way I, that may have been more helpful to me in the past, but, um, it's, 
honestly, it's just a leap of faith. It's just doing it. It's just going out there being, being, and being okay to be vulnerable and being okay to, to mm -hmm. maybe make it a bad, quote unquote, bad decision. And like, okay, well, can I learn from this bad decision I just made? Was I not listening or was I, or was that just an experience I needed? Ah, which is another thing that's, um, I find interesting when we have experiences, whether they are quote unquote good or bad. Um, it was, what can I learn? It's not, it's not a victim mentality. Like I, I mm -hmm. never really felt like a victim at all. And I, I always kind of sort of took responsibility for the things that happened in my life, meaning don't put it up to other people. I don't blame other people or other other circumstances it, those are it just happen. those are things that just happen or just just the way it is so it's okay to make mistakes but you just don't stay there it's like okay so i mess that one up today okay next yeah everything's an opportunity and giving yourself you know being gentle with yourself yeah everybody is going through it you are not alone <laughs> I'm not alone everybody is is doing the best that they can showing up making decisions Going down a pathway, oh, that didn't work. Going down another pathway, oh, what did I learn? Keep moving. Keep moving forward. What was it? Uh, finding Nemo, just keep swimming, right? Right. What, you know, your journey through your, your life and through your healing, because I think we're all in a process of healing. Our entire lives is a process of healing. Animals have been such a significant part of your healing journey. Could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. This is everyone... Uh people who, who resonate with this as far as their, their animals are like their babies. They're, they're, you know, little fur babies and they, they love them and they'll do anything that they, they can for them. For me, I remember as a child, they were for my companions because I very, very uh, introverted child. I was very shy. Animals were just, they were just, they didn't judge you. They didn't, they didn't care what it looked like that day or whatever. They just woke up joy joyfully and we would play and, you know, they never judged me or thought I, you know, what did you wear in there today? Yeah, you know, what is that? <laughs> Here's some of your hair, will you? You know, or something. So they were a great comfort to me. I come from a large family, and you know, it's sometimes you get lost in the shuffle, and because your parents, my, both my parents were working, very hardworking people for you know raising a large family. So I had a lot of alone time. So my pets were kind of a nice comfort for me and companionship. And as I grew up, grew um, as I went through my life, there was a big big portion of my life where I didn't have any animals. I was, my husband and I were musicians, were traveling, traveling around the country. That was for a good uh, 18, 19 years until I got my first Ooh. puppy for myself. And what I found, and I continue to know that this, this has absolutely been my purpose in this life, or I won't even say purpose, but I would say why they were such a big, significant part of my life was they taught me unconditional love hmm. and being a very shy person and not a very trusting person working on that they just I don't think I would I wasn't really learning that from people I wouldn't allow it first of all I was very closed off to a lot of things so but animals sort of they forgive everything they're in and you felt safe with them and I felt safe and they were they, they were they were my reason for getting up. And I mean that in in a very serious way because there were those times in our lives where we're just why, you know, why are we getting up in the morning? You know, they were my reason for getting up in the morning. They they have been in my throughout my life to make sure I wake up in the morning. And it sounds like cryptic and dark and everything, but no. it just gives me something to, to look forward to in the day. And then they and I also know that they they're teaching me valuable lessons about myself because they would mirror a lot of a lot of my emotional stuff. Like, I, for instance, the first the little puppy, the first puppy I got when we first moved into town, he was a handful, and I keep this clean, so I'm not going to use the word I was I would want to use. But he was definitely a challenge for me. Extremely smart, sweet as I'll get out, but he was he pushed my buttons. He, did, he challenged me every time, and I feel all this anger. And the things would come up like I wasn't good enough. I didn't treat him well enough. He didn't love me. There was a lot of stuff that was coming at me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this little dog is is showing me all of these unhealed things in me. Reflection. Reflection, absolutely. And all of my animals, they showed 
situations, they, whether it be behavioral issues or even some physical things that would come up that would show that there's something going on in me that they're picking. Mm-hmm. Because I believe that animals, they just, they're so sensitive to energies and if I'm having a bad day or they, they know they without me even saying anything to them. They you know stay away because my energy is big and not so good. So away they were away. And then be times where I was I feel a little sad or a little depressed or even crying that they'd come right into my lap and they would lick the tears off my face and just kind of cuddle with me. So they they get it. They know it. And I felt safe knowing that this creature knows knows me. They know what they know what I need. Um and that that was really powerful for me and important in my life because they led me in all these different directions. I became a dog trainer because of my that little guy in the beginning there. That was a step into another part of my life that taught me. Um, An amazing it, dog trainer. Dog training and holistic ways of treating certain mm-hmm. things. I met a lot of wonderful vets, holistic vets that took the time to teach me these things. And I kind of went down the rabbit hole, so to speak, of natural ways of doing things, feeding them naturally, treating them naturally, letting them be who they are, which is important. Dogs behave a certain way because they're dogs. So let's understand why they're doing the things they're doing. It opened up a whole new chapter for me. After I had stopped performing and being going doing music, I kind of was sitting there going, now what? And that's why I, I got the puppy because I had time. So then that opened up a whole, just a whole new chapter. I want to go back just for a minute on the fact that you were an entertainer, (laughs) an introvert, right? And an entertainer. And how, how does that work? Good question. I I get that asked a lot, especially with people who know me really well. They're just kind of like, like, they don't, sometimes they're like, well, who was that on stage just now? (laughs) Um, I think performing was a way for me to, um, to express a lot of emotions that I may be feeling. Uh, if it's particular songs that I would do, usually there was something in me that I needed to express. It was a good way for me to express myself in a safe way. You know, you know, being Was it a persona? Was it kind of like you were was, one was, way on stage? Well, I'm a Gemini, so it was probably a persona. Oh. Some, um, there was, it was, um, it was kind of like, it was, like it was giving me permission to be somebody else for a minute. And it necessarily a personal, just another part of my personality that I did was was not that I sort of kept hidden. So just for you know, forty five minutes to set on stage, I was able to be, be a wild uh, child. The, the great run around on stage and mm-hmm. do what I do. I remember one time my mother went to see me and uh, see me sing, and I was doing this Taylor Dane song, and I'm uh, dating myself, but <laughs> Taylor Dane. And I love Taylor Dane. Go and listen to her if you don't know she is. This yes. powerful, big voice. And I remember I was doing one of her songs. <laughs> After the song was over, my mother said, she called me, she's like, are you okay? Do you feel all right? She's like, yes, I'm fine, Mom. She just didn't expect that to come out. Because I, that was one of, she believed me, that was, I was very good. Girl. I would, you know, do what I was told. And I was very kind of like, yes, Mom, or whatever. But, you know, when she saw that on stage, she just, she was a little worried. <laughs> well, that was for a minute. So it's, it was a good way for me to sort of just let out a little bit of what I had. Creativity. And being a Gemini, you are very creative. You, you have, you know, you have the gifts on both sides, right? So very intelligent. You love to read. Uh, yeah. You're a great teacher. You're also an incredible artist and singer. And I could keep going on. Yes, you know that I adore you and love you. Uh, <laughs> Gotcha. So now that you are in this chapter and you are coming through this past chapter of of a significant obstacle with, you know, great success. Uh, what's what's next for you? Anything and well, everything. I kind of started already. I'm kind of leading yeah. you. I'm leading you because let's talk about. Let's talk about your very large fur baby yes. and when you got him and how also a part of your healing in this last chapter. Yes, yes. Oh, that this. Yeah. And again, this is why I'm saying may, animals were meant to be in my life for a reason. And this was definitely one of them. I 
wanted to take that chance and say, okay, so I want something bad enough. I'm going to get it. I'm going to do it. I'm let, not let fear get in the way of whatever this is. And I remember it was, it's been a childhood dream of mine, um, to have a horse. But, you know, obviously, well, you know, circumstances just didn't allow for that. Um, but I think when that opportunity presented itself, it was obviously for a reason. I just, I, I wanted to remember I was going to get them no matter what. And I, get them. I remember, um, and this is really a really nice little exercise that um, I wish I could put more practice to do this because it does work. Uh, that manifestation, thing, you know, it was, I, I said, well, how am I going to get this horse? You know, horses aren't cheap. Mm -hmm. When was this year? This was in September of 20. Well, no, this is COVID, around COVID era. This is when I first met 2020. him. 2020. 2020. He was at a barn that was a lesson barn, and he was one of the horses they used for lessons. I was riding him at the time, and I completely fell in love with this horse. Didn't know a darn thing about horses. I just knew I loved him. <laughs> so I was learning as I was going along. And I just fell in love with him, and there was an opportunity that he might be so in Texas or something. I was terrible. I was like, no, you're going to take my baby away from me. So how do I, how do I, how do I make this happen? So I remember sitting down and saying, okay, how am I going to make this happen? So I pictured in my head what it would look like. I'm, I walked to the barn one day and there would be a big old bow on his, on his stall and somebody would say, it's yours now. And it wasn't so much the thought of it or even like saying the words. It was the feeling, mm -hmm. that feeling of what it would feel like to and to just, and to nothing. Grab his little nose, nuzzle it, and just watching him run. Just is one of my greatest joys. Is to just watch him run. It's just he's graceful and powerful and just beautiful. I just felt that in so much in my bones that I could almost smell him. Mm. Just that thought, and I held on to that for days. He's not going anywhere. This is what it feels like for me to have him. Not what I think going to feel like what it feels like to happen and the universe does what it does <laughs> and the series of events it was a couple of months but kept doing what i was doing and sure enough he was mine lots of okay so you things. said you said you were doing the visualization for days and then you stopped doing it or I did. okay kind of let it go i, I said let it go i let it go i surrendered it i said this is this is what i want i'm not going to keep because I feel that more you, we, we try to push something through, especially if, they're, if it's not meant to happen, we just kind of block that energy a little bit. So right. I figured, you, universe, you know what I want. You know how it would make me feel. I'm leaving it up to you. And I just sort of let it go. And it just, like I said, series of events, it just, everything just kind of lined up. And I think I have a really wonderful friend to thank for that. A big part of that. And then there was my husband who saved anything to make me happy kind of guy. He's like, I have nothing. I have no idea what this is going to look like. Or, uh, just do your thing. Just have your horse. Enjoy it. I don't know what it looks like. That being said, after I had I had quite a little manifested, this is where he was teaching me a lot about my self-confidence. Now, he's a 1,200 pound animal who could very mm. easily kill you. <laughs> if you've been in the wrong spot at the wrong time, it can happen. It happens. Those things do happen. It's not like if we didn't tend to, it would happen. And it's kind of scary to walk into a stall with a 1200 body. It just kind of walks around. And so mm -hmm. he sort my confidence. I had to build up my confidence around that. And that kind of lead, leaks into other parts of your life. When you start feeling you can conquer that, it's like, well, what, what can I, what can I conquer? You know, it's like something else comes up. Let me, let me try that. I'll get a little bit more uh, confident in the things I was trying to do. Um, you know, get yeah, I'm an older person. I would say I'm in my 20s anymore. So it's not like I'm going to be, you know, running barrels with him or anything, anything like that soon. But I am learning dressage with him. Yeah, I would never think about what is that? I mean, oh, what is right. that? Ex explain what that is. And I love that you, you're like fearless now. I don't really, you, honestly, again, kudos to my trainer. I don't really know what it is. I just know that there's patterns that they do. It's fancy and they trot and they walk and they do these patterns. Well, you're a small person. I mean, yeah. you're petite. And and 
he's a big boy. Right. Yeah. He's not a little horse. No. And so there's just like this other layer of your growth that has been just so spectacular. And I think, you know, creator, God, universe, yeah. Jesus, whoever yeah. it is that you want to credit yeah. was magnificent in bringing Atlas to you prior to your diagnosis, the diagnosis. Yeah, it, 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 and, and bringing it back to that, um, he, I actually had him set to Utah for the summer, that summer that was diagnosed because there was so much going on and it was hot and I really wanted him to be, be somewhere out of, out of love. I guess it was just too hot. Um, again, it was that, okay, I have him. And I, I need to be healthy. For him. I, I have to be here for him. So that was just another another incentive for me to to, mm -hmm. to do that healing and to do what I needed to do to make sure that I was present for him. And he's been present for me. I mean, he's taught me more about myself this last couple of years than I I that no no other person has really been able to pull out of me. And but again, at the same time, now that. I feel more confident and have more self-esteem. I, I feel like I can go out into the world and meet new people and be new, do new things and, and not be um, so self-conscious or fearful of whatever. Yeah. So it's just, and, it's just another one of those things that, and I feel strong when I'm at the bar because you, you have to do things, you know, there's doing stuff. <laughs> Cleaning out a you stall. Also, yeah. You got to stack up and, equipment and all kinds of stuff so i feel this another layer of, of that physical strength that he gave me too and now, up, it takes physicality to do that too so but he got ill yes he, he got ill and he almost died last year quite the journey right in part two maria continues sharing her life experience with atlas her inner struggles and revelations of human consciousness, spirituality, her relationship with Jesus, and advice to her younger self. Stay with us and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because you do not want to miss any part of this inspiring interview with Maria Hosmer.